In the desert, Agent Stephen Lubinsky visit a Mexican couple. After scanning their home for any possible danger, they try to talk to the husband, who only keeps repeating the word rebirth. He gives the agents his rosary, but doesn't answer any questions. His wife says he used to be blind, yet isn't anymore. Then she takes them to the spot where something fell from the sky and started all this. Meanwhile, mechanic David visits the grave of his dead wife, while telling her their daughter will be visiting soon. Afterward, he goes to work, and while driving, he listens to the news about the ongoing war. At the garage, the mechanics are idle due to the economic crisis that has cost them clients. David doesn't want to give up, but his boss announces it's over. Suddenly, veteran Zach shows up looking for a job, and David has to turn him down. That night, David goes to a bar and hears an edgy man insult the American military. Zack gets irritated and confronts him, so the man takes Zack's drink and follows him outside. Knowing the man plays dirty, David follows them and discovers Zack being surrounded by a gang. Two guys hold him while the edgy man beats him up. When they don't stop, David joins the fight, but both he and Zack are easily overpowered and end up bleeding. In the struggle, the gang accidentally pulls off Zack's fake leg and realizes he's disabled, so they leave. David gives Zack his leg back and offers him a ride. After a tense conversation, Zack is dropped off at the rehab center where he lives. When David goes home, he realizes he's late for his own birthday. His daughter Annabelle has been waiting with cake but has bad news. She was forced to drop out of college because David's last two payments didn't go through. David promises to get the money soon, but Annabelle doesn't want him to overwork and ends the conversation with an engraved watch as a gift. David wants to drink to forget, but there's no more alcohol in the house. He leaves in his car to buy more and is shocked to see a fiery ball in the sky quickly falling toward the road. David tries to move the car but ends up falling off the road into a forest ditch, landing upside down. After a few minutes, a bleeding David regains consciousness and sees someone walking nearby. Ignoring his pain, he starts following the woman, who whispers his name in a familiar voice. However, his wounds are too much and he keeps falling. The next morning, Annabelle realizes her father isn't back and gets worried when he doesn't answer his phone. She calls the police, but they say 24 hours must pass before he's considered missing. She stops by the garage, but they haven't seen him either. Annabelle searches the area and eventually finds the crashed vehicle in the ditch, but David isn't around. Night falls, but Annabelle doesn't give up, using a flashlight to search the forest. When her batteries run out, she returns to her car and loses hope as she cries. However, when she starts the car, the lights reveal David standing in the middle of the road. Later at the hospital, David wakes up to see the same woman speaking to him. Meanwhile, the doctor tells Annabelle they found something strange. David, who previously donated a kidney to his wife before she died, now has both kidneys according to new x-rays. David is allowed to go home, but he can't stop seeing the woman everywhere. He decides to sit outside on his wife's old chair and remembers what happened last night. While following the mysterious person, he fell into a crater where the object from the sky was glowing. Suddenly, the object grew vines that grabbed his arm. After Annabelle falls asleep, David hears his name again. He follows the noise into the forest, shocked to reunite with his wife Jane. They share a hug before Jane makes him have a vision. A nuclear war is coming, so David must build something to protect their daughter. When David sees on the news that the war is worsening, he decides to go to the barn and start making plans. Meanwhile, Stipe and Lubinsky argue with their boss, who thinks searching for alien rocks is a waste of time amid the war. In fact, they had orders to end the mission, but Steve believes alien technology may help them win. Later, the agents go to the lab and receive bad news. The specimen they brought from the desert is dead, as these aliens can't survive under intense heat. Desperate for clues, Steve orders the doctor to open up the Mexican man and tells Lubinsky to inform the wife that her husband died of cardiac arrest. The next day, Annabelle watches family videos at home while David retrieves Jane's old truck and drives to the rehab center to offer Zach a job. Both men go to the forest, and David leaves Zach in charge of the winch before going to the crater. To his surprise, grass has started to grow around the alien object. He connects the winch to drag it out, and Zach helps him lift it onto the truck, requiring the strength of two men. Suddenly, Zach pulls his hand back, revealing something strange. When David returns home, he spends the day in the barn building and planning, which Annabelle notices. In the evening, David enters the house to discover Annabelle going through her mother's things, planning to donate half and keep half in the barn for a fresh start. David disagrees, 
saying they don't need to pretend Jane isn't there to move on. At the rehab center, Zach feels something strange in his leg stump, only to find a weird protuberance growing. The next day, he joins an anti-war protest in front of an army office. When someone spits on his friend Jim, calling him a traitor, Jim tries to fight but falls out of his wheelchair. Zach jumps in to defend him, so the police break up the scene and send everyone home. Walking away, Zach notices his leg stump is bleeding. At the barn, David realizes that the alien object has been damaged by sunlight. Suddenly, Zach arrives, demanding to know what happened to him. Moments later, Annabelle arrives and sees blood on the front yard. She rushes inside to find her father tending to Zach on the couch. She suggests taking him to the hospital, but David refuses and reveals Zach's leg is slowly regrowing, just like David's kidney. This confirms the alien object has healing powers. David tells Annabelle to take care of Zach and goes away in the truck. In the evening, the agents hear rumors about the alien object that fell at David's city. Lubinsky thinks they should be following orders and abandon the search, but Stevie is stubborn and announces they'll investigate this new clue. Back to the barn, Zach is having a panic attack as his PTSD triggers nightmares about his and Jim's limb loss during the war. Annabelle helps him calm down so he can rest. At that moment, David comes back with two tanks of cooling gas and announces they're taking Zach to the barn. Annabelle helps him move him, and David immediately puts the gas around the alien object to keep it fresh. Next, they sit Zach next to it, and the object immediately puts its vines around his arm, causing the leg to finish growing in seconds. Annabelle steps away from a curious vine, reaching for her, and passes out at the nasty sight leg. While unconscious, Annabelle dreams of being alone with her mother when she died. She wakes up in the morning and discovers Zach walking outside with two perfectly good legs. He can't believe what's happening, and he's absolutely delighted. Annabelle and Zach join David at the barn, where he's finished designing a bunker-like capsule for protection against an unstoppable tragedy. Annabelle thinks her dad is starting to lose it, but he swears she can trust him. Afterward, David goes to see his friend Tony at the junkyard, but only buys a small piece of metal. Then they go to the bar, and David tricks Tony into drinking until he passes out. He leaves Tony in his car before taking his keys, Matt, which he uses to enter the junkyard with Zach and steal all the materials they need for the capsule. They even take a full mixer truck. Everything is taken to an abandoned factory where they can work in secret. While they drive through the forest road, they see the agents searching the area. The next morning, Tony wakes up and finds the keys in his pocket as usual. In the forest, the agents find the crater, but there's only a small alien sample in it. The local sheriff tells them to find David, explaining he crashed here a few nights ago but didn't get a single scratch. The sample is taken to the lab, and the scientists explain that the alien object carries the DNA strands of various plants and animals, including humans. They conclude this is a living sample of abiogenesis, the natural process that allows life to arise from non-living matter. It precedes evolution, it's just outright creation. At the factory, David and Zach work hard on the capsule, using the cement mixer and protecting it with steel. They put the alien object inside to keep it safe. In the meantime, Annabelle visits Jane's grave and decides she needs to do more to move on. She grabs some of her mother's things and makes a pile to start a fire, but is interrupted by the agents looking for David. The agents stay in the house until David comes back to question him. David lies and says he doesn't remember what happened after the car crash, only that he saw a light in the sky that made him lose control. Stipe reveals he knows about the regrown kidney and shows them pictures of the Mexican man, saying this guy had also thought he was healed, but now he's dead. David takes the agents to the barn and shows them where he used to keep the object, claiming that the sun melted it. The agents find a stain on the ground and pretend to believe David before leaving. Afterward, Annabelle tells David that this is getting too dangerous, but he refuses to accept it. He says Jane showed him a worldwide tragedy, and Annabelle snaps, reminding him that he wasn't there when Jane died and that now the object is manipulating his guilt. The next morning, David goes for a walk outside and is shocked to see huge flames coming after Annabelle, but it's just a dream. The next time David goes to the factory, the agents follow him. David notices and calls a friend to ask for a favor while he starts driving in circles around town. Moments later, the agents finally manage to block his way on a road outside town, but it turns out to be David's friend. The agents are angry that they lost David and decide to use Annabelle against him. Meanwhile, Tony's boss has discovered his truck is missing and found the robbery in the security footage, but he can't see any faces. 
It's obvious that someone used the employee's keys, so the boss orders Tony to get his truck back. At the factory, Zack is still working on the capsule and watches the vines grow inside it while remembering the soldiers that fell with him during the war. When he goes home, Annabelle is there because she needs someone to talk to and shares how David stopped visiting Jane after the transplant failed. He was obsessed with working to pay for the treatments, and now she's worried he may be losing his mind again. Zack promises to protect David before introducing Annabelle to Jim so they can explain there's a cure. Jim doesn't believe him, so Zack has to show him his regrown leg. Still thinking it's a trick, Jim turns down the offer even though he's missing multiple limbs. On their way out, Zack and Annabelle are cornered by the agents. At the factory, David is visited by Tony, who found him because they used to play there as kids. He freaks out when he sees all the stolen goods and refuses to lose his job over this, so he tries to call the police. David panics and jumps on Tony to try to take his phone, so Tony quickly retaliates by punching him. A desperate David kicks him off, and Tony crashes against the table before falling unconscious. However, when David takes a closer look, he's devastated to discover Tony hit his head and is now dead. Hearing Jane's voice, David burns the body. Then he checks inside the capsule and discovers the vines have spread all over the walls, creating living tissue. Suddenly, he has a vision of himself dancing with Jane and admits what he did, saying he isn't worthy of salvation. Jane explains that it was never meant for him. The capsule is for Annabelle and Zack. At home, the agents are keeping Annabelle and Zack in handcuffs. The news keeps showing the state of the war, which has escalated into nuclear threats. Stipe tries using pretty words to make them talk. However, both of them stay silent and don't fall for his bait. Then Stipe grabs a fire poker and starts hitting Zack on his new leg. Annabelle tries to stop him, but she's easily pushed off. As Stipe begins to beat Zack up, David comes back and carefully sneaks around his house. He finds the pile of things Annabelle left earlier and finishes covering it with gas to set it on fire. The guards by the entrance inform the agents in the house, and Steep sends Lubinsky out to investigate, guessing this is David's doing. Since Lubinsky takes the other two agents with him, now David can sneak into the house and threaten Steepy with his gun. He forces him to drop the handcuff keys and turn around, allowing Annabelle to knock him out with the poker. After taking Stipey's gun and getting rid of the handcuffs, the trio escapes through the window. At that moment, Lubinsky comes back and hands Steep his rifle, which he uses to shoot Annabelle on a non-lethal spot. The guys shoot back and hurt Steepy before running to the car to escape. This is Stipe's plan. He knows David will want to heal Annabelle, so he and Lubinsky immediately start following them. Lubinsky thinks they've crossed the line, but Steep claims everything is fair to stop a nuclear war. During the trip, Annabelle tells David that Jane needs him and is waiting for him, causing David to have a breakdown. As soon as they make it to the factory, David puts Annabelle inside the capsule, yet no healing happens, and he loses his mind again. Thinking he worked for nothing and hearing the agents outside, David starts throwing gas at the capsule and takes out his lighter, unaware that the vines are finally reaching out to Annabelle. At that moment, the agents come in and ask him not to do it. David refuses to put the flame out, but he's interrupted by a healed Annabelle poking her head out. Now David does close his lighter, only for Steve to shoot him down. Lubinsky finally snaps and tries to stop his partner from causing more damage, but Spite easily pushes him off. Two other agents try to sneak around the machine, so Zack shoots one in the head before getting stuck in a gunfight with the other. Spite tries to join him, only for Lubinsky to shoot him in the shoulder. After a few shots, Zack manages to bring the other agent down, however, his shoulder also gets hurt. Suddenly, an earthquake hits the area and a bright light appears in the distance. The first nuclear bombs are falling, and it'll only escalate from now on. People all over the country come out of their homes to watch the explosion, except for Jim, who used his medicine to self-delete as soon as he saw the news. In the factory, David tells Zack to take care of Annabelle before making him enter the capsule. Then he apologizes to his daughter for leaving her and presses a button to seal the capsule up. As more explosions can be heard in the distance, Spite begs David to open the capsule, but he claims he can't. At that moment, the alien object starts filling the capsule with water. Annabelle and Zack at first panic, but as the water completely covers them, the object releases flakes that freeze the liquid and put the duo in cryogenic sleep. At the same time, David dies and sees Jane welcoming him to the other life. All over the world, nuclear bombs continue to go off. Eventually, the capsule opens up and Annabelle and Zack awaken. 
Plants have grown over it and its metal is rusted, but outside the place is nothing but ruins. It seems centuries have passed, 